Welcome to Inspired Conversations, Living the Legacy with Legends. My name is Unkarabi Lewisdo Mukoto and I am your host. The need for children's home highlights the lack of education and skills development. Today on my show, I have two wonderful sisters who have founded a homes for a lot of poor children and addicts. And they're here today to share more about what they're doing. Uh, Christian and Anthea, right? Hi. Yes. Hi. And Anthea. Yes. That's correct, yes. <laughs> Welcome to the show. And thank you for thank having you for us. Coming. Thank you for having us. Yes, Appreciate yes, it. Yes, yes. Just a um, little bit, tell me more about you guys. Where, who are you? Maybe we can start with you, Christian. Okay, Wings of Inspiration Care Centre was founded by myself and my twin sister. Obviously, growing up in hard times in our life, um, and in experiencing different circumstances, we decided to give up our corporate jobs and we wanted to go into the helping the community. And with that being said, we opened up a sober home for stage two recovering addicts. And at that same time, we were um, partnered with Dora's Ark, the orphanage. Okay. So that's how we started our thing and it's just slowly but surely grown. So we now have a play school in Mpumalanga. We serve a soup kitchen in Krugerstorp, and we've recently taken on a senior citizen old age home that we partnered with that will be in Ranfontein. Okay. So when you identify the need uh, for kids you know, who were homeless, um, what actually inspired you? I, I, th I think you said through the hard times that you guys went through. Can maybe you explain more about that? Um, what inspired us more was we'd actually, the owner or founder of Dora's Ark was Mum Dora. Um, we had met her and just gone for a basic Christmas drive and for my sister to do her testimony. And on doing that, we then made connections with the children themselves. And when Mum Dora, on Mum Dora's passing, they asked that her last wish was that we had joined in to create a better home for the children. So having also had brought up with no money and funds in our lives, we knew that the conditions weren't healthy that the kids were living in. So for us, it was more on a hygienic and obviously seeing them suffer. But having come from a drug history, my sister didn't want any of them to fall in that pattern just because they were orphans or homeless kids. Okay, that's nice. So um, you actually joined Mum's Daughter's uh, organization yes. and you, you, you took over from yes. that. Okay. So, but when did Winds of Inspiration then give birth to? When, when did you guys? We Wings of Inspiration was um, founded in the September. We both gave up our corporate jobs, not knowing what it is that God wanted us to do. We thought initially it was going to be a woman's shelter for abused women and children. So we then created a sober a house for that. But it wasn't the house that God wanted us to do. It was for mainly for addicts. So we then opened up a sober home, and at the same time we were introduced to Mum Dora. So we were just partnered oh, okay. with everything, and that's how it became Wings of Inspiration. Inspirations oh, okay, Key Centre. Okay. So now, in the meantime, do you guys run both the, the one for Mama's daughter and also the Winds of Inspiration? Dora's Ark is run by Mum Tembi, which is Mum Dora's daughter. They are beneficiary. Wings of Inspiration is a company that's on its own, and we have five umbrellas underneath us. So every um, company that's underneath us is run individually by themselves. However, they are all our beneficiaries, so we make sure that all their needs are taken care of. Okay. And, and how do you guys get funding for, for this huge work? You know, do you fund yourself or do you get funding from the government maybe? Um, you want to answer? Okay. Um, we have a little office at our sober house. So we have five um, call centre agents that phone companies asking for CSR sponsorships, personal sponsorships on a personal level. Um, and then those people fund us, and that's what we use to assist the community. Okay. Okay. It's, um, we are not funded by the government at all. Um, when you get government grants and stuff, it's a whole different process that you have to go through. So in order to create what we have, um, we've created an MPC, so it's a non-profit company. So we cannot get government funding. However, most companies have to give away CSR budgets. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, that's how we're able to get funds to create that because it's easier to get funding from companies and individuals than from the government. But why is it difficult to get it from the government? 
because the paperwork that they request and like if it, I'll use a pure example of taking a child off the streets they don't know who their mom their dad was their uncle aunts they don't know their paperwork their birth dates stuff like that so for you to go back and find the history of all that in order to get one grant is so not worth it by the time you've managed to go back in the history you might the child's already 18 and you cannot get a grant unless you have all the child's paperwork in place yeah. <laughs> so it becomes complicated where you eventually just give up hope so it's easier the way that we do it now well that the with the csi being like it is with companies that way it's easier to get but you still also have to be legally registered you have to be with SARS. you have to have a pbo number so you don't just get funds unless you have all those things in place or where people are monitoring you auditors to see that you're actually spending the money on what companies are giving it to you for no, I see. Because uh, I mean, I was worried that I mean, if you guys are doing such great work, then the government must actually give hand to, towards that. But I understand your part that you know, a lot of processes and stuff. So, yeah, I, I understand. I understand. Okay, you said that one of the things that actually keeps you going um, is that you are compassionate towards other people. You know. So I just want to know, you know, where does it come from? This to be passionate, to be compassionate to other people. I think when um, you're born in hard times, and we were four children growing up, um, that our compassion and love for one another was out of this world. So it naturally grew with us as we were older. We were always protective and always wanting to give back. And so I think it, you, you're born with it. It's literally, if you want to actually give your life to helping people, you must be born with it. It takes a lot of courage. Um, sometimes it can be disheartening. So in order to continuously give back, you've got to be a giver and not a taker. From my side, it's the same, and I also landed up in a shelter, so I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. So I know I have a heart because I've been in the same situation as other people in um, shelters, in an orphanage. Okay, I wasn't in an orphanage, but I was in a shelter. So I, I do have a compassion or a heart to try and show people that you can get out of it. You don't have to live there continuously. That's great. Now, I just want to know if you guys, do you only provide homes to those children or is there any form of um, maybe education development projects that you guys do towards the, those addicts and, and the homeless? Okay, so for, if we're talking on the orphanage side, all our children under six, we've created a nursery school. So they go from the premises to the nursery school and they're educated there. All the children under six and over are enrolled in school. So all of them have to go to school. Um, as far as the sober home goes, that is a second stage facility. So what's taught there is obviously to be the man of your household. Um, they have to find jobs. They try to reintegrate themselves back with their families. So... Uh, it's not necessarily something that we're giving back, but there, there are things set in structure that they're able to go and do okay. in order to get educated, okay. basically. Tell me about the role of God in your life towards your organization. You know, you, ha you have mentioned earlier that when you quit your jobs, you didn't know what God has for you. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about the role of God in, in your life towards your organization. Um, being an addict myself, I gave my life to the Lord um, five years ago and from myself and my husband and from that time our lives changed completely so God is the map to life um, then my sister gave her life to the Lord and we've just continued to show people that without God in your life it's not going to be possible and that's why our, everything about Wings of Inspiration is God-centered even our slogan is we live by faith and not by sight um, as, a, as you can see, it is a charitable organization, but we know that we, we make um, do devotions with the sober house guys in the morning. We attend church every Sunday. The orphanage attends church. Um, everything is done through prayer, and that's the only way we feel that people can give the uh, change or be, give their lives to the Lord. Amen. <laughs> I will say amen for that. <laughs> Let's talk about the... SA Heroes Awards. You guys were nominated as finalists, and actually, you you won the awards, right? Yes, yes. You won the awards. <laughs> Tell us about the experience of being nominated until you you won the award. 
Um, the build-up, I think, initially, it's nice to know that people actually know that your organisation or your charitable organisation is doing what they say they do. Um, so it was nice to be nominated. Um, we weren't expecting to win the award, but obviously it opens up more platforms for us to be able to help more people. And so it was a nice surprise and it was an awesome evening. Yeah. And you, yes, um, I was also shocked to win the award, um, but grateful in the same token because people had to vote for you to become, you got in the top five and then people, the community had to vote for you and that's where you got your award, the winner. Um, so it was so nice to know that people are rooting for us and nominated us to be the winners. So yeah, it was an uh, awesome evening. And uh, after, after the award, what, what come next? <laughs> That's what you always ask, yeah. what come next yeah. now? <laughs> to win next year's award. <laughs> Um, no, what, what comes um, next? Yeah, yes, we got a lot of exposure through that. Yeah. Um, we had a lot of newspapers contacting us, a lot of clients congratulating us, and are thankful that we're putting their money to good use. Um, even just people that we've helped were congratulating us and saying that they call us the sisters, the angels. Mm -hmm. So um, it was nice in that respect to get a lot of media coverage. Yeah. On, on our wings of inspiration, not for ourselves, remember all glory to God, yes, yes. Um, but he assists us in all those categories. And what can you say? <laughs> what uh, that, uh, um, okay, so from apart from winning the award, what next for us is obviously trying to create our new um, uh, senior citizens home, so the old age home. Um, doors have been opened for us tremendously for that. Um, there is a few things we still want to complete at the orphanage, like um, having proper ceiling boards and stuff. So there's projects in place, and obviously in Pumalanga, it's very difficult to get sponsorship for that area because it is in a rural area. So our dream is that, and part and parcel of everything that's under our umbrella, that we would be able to take funds from that to get to give to in Pumalanga, um, because those kids also suffer a lot. Um, the the world we all know this side versus rural is totally different, but they already experiencing it in some slight way. I mean, from when us we first arrived there, they weren't able to speak English. In fact, they were frightened of white people, and now they're able to speak English a little slightly. They can say their nursery rhymes. So, in, under all our umbrellas, we're hoping that each project, so each one of them, will get a project for 2019. Yeah, that's good. And in the same note, you, you know. Um, non-racial organization. Your, your organization is non-racial. Mm, definitely not racial yeah. at all. So, do you guys have in, in your team? Do you have mixed uh, race in your team and also that runs wings? Yes. yes. Um, so basically, Anthony and uh, my sister and myself um, run wings of inspiration, but we do have people that work with us. Um, but in under the umbrellas, each one at the homes have their own set of people that work with them. So let's say we're talking about Dora's Ark, it's Mum Tembi who runs it, and then there are, uh, and Tabo, and then underneath them are house mothers and stuff, which are also all non ray it's no, no, no colour. Yeah. Um, same in Pumalanga, same with the soup kitchen. So basically for all of us, we don't see colour. Everything's, but Wings of Inspiration at the office is run by myself and my sister. Okay. Well, it's understandable. Your last words to the viewers. Um, just encouragement, you know, someone is watching the show as we speak and, and they are having the idea or the dream of going out and reaching out, you know, and meeting the needs of the community. What can you encourage them, someone who is watching? Okay, so for me, I would say you have to hang in there. It doesn't happen overnight. The dream isn't fulfilled instantly. It's not a money-making scheme. You have to be in it for your for actually serving, and it takes a good two years before you're able to actually be able to help the community as your dream is. So you have to persevere, and um, it's not an instant thing. So um, make sure that you do everything legal if you're going the MPC way, because there's a lot of organizations, unfortunately, that do open and then close in two months because it wasn't what... So it has to be your dream, it has to be your vision, and you have to do everything legal, and you will be blessed. Thank you. And your last words? <laughs> yes, I agree. 
we always open, we've helped a lot of charities open their organizations. You can contact us, we're free to give you advice on whatever you need. Remember, there's a lot of underprivileged people out there and if we stick together as a team, um, we, we call it a community of um, helpers. So we're there, if you need us, shout, we'll help you, we'll guide you, we'll lead you in the right direction. And you can also provide some details where they can get hold of you. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You can contact us at uh, www.wingsinspiration.co.za. You can phone me on my cell, 071-829-1293. Um, you can send email us... Email Anthea, so it's A-N-T-H-E-A, at wingsinspiration, W-I-N-G-S, inspiration.co.za. You can also look at Facebook. We are live on Facebook. You can see the daily events that are happening. So even if you don't have your own charitable organization, you want to volunteer with us, please come on board. Our doors open for anybody. If there's an addict struggling, contact us. Let's see how we can help you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Christine and Anthea. <laughs> I'm giving it right. <laughs> you know, when I grew up, I, I had uh, friends who, who were twins. You know, and because I grew up with, with them, it was easy for me to identify them. But now, those people who are far away, it was very difficult to identify my friends. So. <laughs> people battle with us. Well. <laughs> so that is why I, I have to make sure that, okay, I claim that this one is Christian and the other one is Anthea. <laughs> so thank you so much, guys, for coming and all the best for, for the good work that you are doing. Thank, thank you, you very much for having thank us. You. Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching Inspired Conversations, Living the Legacy with the Legends. My name is Unkarabi Lemukoto and I am your host. And I'm saying to you, let's meet next time, same place, same time on Global Conference TV. The journey continues. <laughs>